Hi folks, it's Jeff Castine here, the Manic Mechanic. I'm down here in Naples, Florida, and I just wanted to give a quick screenshot of who I am before we get the video started so everybody remembers me. Okay, let's get started. So, you may remember, Kaplan American Eye was here approximately four weeks ago and we emptied out that trailer over there. Had a bunch of CR250s and a bunch of parts and some Can-Ams, about three of those and a bunch of mini bikes. So we emptied it all out for the day and then we ended up buying it all. That is my truck and camper. And when the deal was all done and we were leaving, Larry and Monica who live here, they offered me to come back and if I wanted to stay in camp, I could do a project with them in the garage and stay here with free electricity and water and a place to stay. So I said, what the heck, I'm down here for another month and a half. So I took them up on that and we'll take a walk over that way. Okay, so we're over here. I wanted to show you that branch that I cut up there. Because that's where my camper is going to be backing in over here and that branch was in the way. So I got up there and cut it. I managed to fall, the branch came down, hit my ladder, I broke my hip, fractured my shoulder, dislocated my shoulder and fractured my scapula. So I'm walking with a cane right now, but we're getting over to the garage. Larry and Monica are such nice people. They took me into their house. I've been here three weeks already recuperating from the fall, but I'm good enough to get back in the garage here and start working on this project. So this is the project. It's an 07 XR400 Honda. Larry saw online that there's a few people out there that may have converted their 400 to electric start. So he did a little research, found out that you could take the parts off in the EX400, which is electric start, and put them on here and make this bike an electric start. So he took it all apart. It's, it's been apart and all labeled and in boxes for three years now, but since I was here, he threw it out if I wanted to help him, and I took him up on it. So my project today is to get everything unpackaged, see what I got, and start putting this engine back together. All right, so I got everything out of the packages that they were in, inspected everything. Uh, I installed some new main bearings in these cases. I got the cases all cleaned up and washed up. I got the crank in there and I got it timed right here. This mark here and this mark here have to line up when this is at top dead center or you'll have a vibrating engine so that's important to get that lined up properly and I got the gearbox all inspected everything looks good there. I ordered a new cam chain for this thing because it's got some time on it and the old chain stretched out. Those are the old main bearings. This is the starter motor. And this is the stator cover off the EX. So starter motor plugs in here. Uh, I got a new set of rings going in this thing. I'm going to hone the cylinder over there. So, and there's the flywheel. You have to get the flywheel with this starter clutch on it. So... We're going to start assembling this thing today. And look who's here. Larry's coming in. <laughs> Where are you, Larry? Good morning, Manic Mechanic. Good morning. So, where did you find out about this, you know, being able to make these electric start? Well, what uh, inspired me is that I just didn't like kicking this thing over. Yeah. I'm getting too old to kick it, especially for a 400. I know some people will say, hey, there's a starting sequence and it starts real easy. But I like the easy button. I have a DR400 and I love just hitting that button, having it start. So long story short, I did some uh, research on the internet and found some other people who have done this and they took a, uh, a Honda TRX400, Yeah. took the crank out of that and the starter motor and the side case and things will bolt up to the XR. So I've uh, spent a long time gathering parts and just kind of having to sit on a shelf and so this project has been a long time coming and when Jeff came down I figured this was the perfect time to take his expertise and put this thing back together. 
Yeah, so here's where the starter motor, these uh, cases are the same as the EX, because this is, we got to drill this one out and tap it, but the other, right? yeah, the starter motor goes right here. Mm -hmm. So that's cool, and the bike is right behind me. I've got the starter solenoid and the wiring harness all on the bike, so we're going to put this motor together today and start putting it in the frame. Larry's going to fabricate a bracket for it to hold the battery on the other side, but... We'll show you that when we get there. Okay, so now we're going to put the transmission in here. This one has a washer and a washer. You have to put them together like this and slip them down in there together. Simple, right? Just drop them in. In the shift forks. There, there's the left one. In the center. In the right. Okay, I got the transmission all in here. It is Sunday morning and it's early. I haven't had a beer yet, so I was fumbling a little bit, but I got it all in there. It's all in there properly. Now we're gonna put this case on here, put the case half on. I'm gonna warm the center of this main bearing up just a little bit, because that's the only interference we got putting this together. It's gonna fit around that journal a little tight, so it only takes a little bit of heat to, to swallow that up. Want me to hold the guide? The hold that thing? over there, yeah. See, when the center of the bearing don't turn anymore, it's locked up, I know it's warm enough. That's it, there she goes. Now we'll put all the case bolts in it. All right, so I got the engine cases together and all bolted up. Now after you bolt up and snug all the bolts up in the engine case, you always wanna turn your transmission shafts to make sure you've got the engine, the engine's not pinched. See the crankshaft moves nice and smooth. Transmission shafts move both of them nice and smooth. So you always wanna check that. So now we're going to put the clutch components in, the new cam chain. These little gears go on the crankshaft, but there's a special slot in it, so, so you can't put them on wrong. They have to be timed with the top end, so they go on like this. That goes on. The oil pump gear just sits on there like that. Nothing holds it on. <laughs> when you put the clutch cover on it, it's got a little shoulder that keeps it, just holds it there. Pretty neat. Okay, now we got this. This is the primary drive gear that drives the clutch basket. 
Has to be just right like that. This gear here has a shoulder on it. It's the oil pump drive gear, and it says out right on it, so Honda's pretty good at that, so you don't mess stuff up. And that's it, man. Now, this goes on here. Clutch basket slips right on there. Like that. Washer. Inner clutch basket. Now, I do want to make sure I can get this in before I get too far here, but I'm pretty sure I can. Kickstarter. Now, when you put the Kickstarter, there's two dots that have to line up on this too, because a, this has to hit the knocker in here and it has to be timed properly or it won't work right. So make sure you line your dots up. Then you wind the spring back. And it goes in this hole way over here. After you put the clutch plates in, you can just put a little pressure on them with your finger and it'll hold the inner basket so you can tighten up that clutch hub nut. And clutch plates have a sharp edge and a round edge. I always put the sharp edge out. That makes sure they're all the same. Just works better. And a lot of times when you do it an older dirt bike, say a two-stroke that's been ridden pretty hard, the, the clutch basket gets hammered out, gets grooves hammered into it by the ears on the on the clutch plate so if you got one like that you can just flat file it flat file the grooves out of it your clutch will work way better it won't chatter when you take off see the inner basket turns but if you just put a little pressure on it it holds it so you can just go like that and hit it with your air gun and it just that's all it needs all right, so we've got the engine cases and the engine the lower end all together here. I got the piston all cleaned up, new rings. I'm gonna hone the cylinder. Then we're gonna work on the head. I got two brand new intake valves going in it, OEM Honda valves. Because the ones that were in it, they get a dent bead in them when they got a lot of time on them. So we're gonna put in some fresh intake valves. This is not normally the hone I use, but I'm out on the road and I don't have my hone with me. But I'm just looking to get some fresh cross hatches in there. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to clean it up and we'll show you how to slap it on there. Okay, moving along here. I've got the, we've got the uh, combustion chamber all wire wheeled and cleaned, decarboned. Got it all clean, the new, new valve seals. Brand new intake valves. I put a little bit of, you put a little grease on the stems. Just pop them in there. <clears throat> I 
Then y'all know what this is. We're going to use this to compress the springs to get them on there. But I got the cylinder all honed, clean. Normally I can do this by myself, but dislocated my shoulder, broke my hip. <laughs> so I'm going to have Larry hold this thing up for me. I'll see if I can get it on here. Okay, so we got the motor all the way back together. Now we had to, we put the starter motor on here, we had to drill, the bosses for the starter motor were here. We just got to drill this hole and put a bolt in it. Got the rock around the valves all adjusted. Now when you do this, you have to buy this cover because it accommodates the starter motor and you got to change the crankshaft because the starter clutch, you have to have a longer shaft on the crankshaft. So it's crankshafts, stator. You also got to get the wiring harness and the CDI box because the stator in here runs the CDI box, makes the motor run out of an EX400. It won't make your XR run. So you got to get all that stuff. So... We're in good shape here. We're going to put the motor in the frame tomorrow. Uh, I know the lighting sucks and the camera sucks, but I, I'm ill-equipped this winter. I had no intentions of working on any motorcycles this winter, but next year when I come down, I'm bringing all my tools, and we're going to offer to you folks, if I'm going to be like a traveling gut, I'm going to be the Manic Mechanic Road Series. So. If you want me to come to your house and help you out with a project, you can call Senior or Junior at Kaplan Cycles and arrange for me to come to your place next winter and I can help you out with a project. So that's what our plans are for next year. So if you're interested in that, call Senior and make arrangements because that might be my new gig in the wintertime, traveling around and meeting folks and, and doing projects with them. It'll be fun. So until we put this in the frame, I'll see you tomorrow.